Here's the repair report section of the video. You can see that I've left the mixer and the power input that goes directly to the mixer. I've got these separate of their case and then I've got the cassette player and the bottom board sitting in its case. Sorry, I should say the condition of the unit as I received it was it did power on and the cassette player worked but I wasn't getting any audio from any of the channels except channel 3 and on that one it's clear playback from the left hand channel and distorted playback from the right hand channel. When I first opened this, I noticed the uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 of these LEDs which are mounted on these kind of plastic standoffs. I think at least 7 of those, one or both pins had a break at the bottom, either a complete break or you could see a sort of uh, cold joint ring forming. What I learned from fixing a Port 02 recently is that these LEDs that are used to meter the output from playback on the Port 02, they were on the power rail for the op amps. So I was thinking, right, has physical pressure on these standoffs causing those connections to break, cut off power to op amps? And the answer was yes. I now have playback from all four channels, but I'm still getting a distorted playback from the right hand channel and a kind of weird speaker thump when I manipulate this master channel. So I'll just show you where we are. If I, if I turn up channel one, it's so all distorted. Just kind of cutting out and doing nasty stuff in the right hand channel. I'll just give you a little case study about using uh, signal tracing to figure out where in a circuit something is going wrong. So here's my little homemade audio probe. It's just uh, an old probe from a meter going through a capacitor to stop DC from getting in. That's connected to the positive tip of this socket and then the negative tip is connected to this little crocodile. Clip. And um, I'm just plugging that into one channel of my powered monitors that are off screen. Yeah, you can use the guitar um, computer speakers, whatever. So the negative side, the alligator clip, I'm attaching to the case of one of the faders because I know that's going to be common ground. And then I can just start touching places where I suspect there's going to be a signal and follow it through and see where it changes. I know from experience from other Porter Studios, once a signal leaves a pan pot, then it's typically going to go through a capacitor and then through an op amp and then another capacitor and then the master fader and another capacitor and then another op amp and then another capacitor. Basically an op amp buffer either side of the master fader. I guess the reason that the op amps are bookended by capacitors like that stop capacitive capacitative loading stop DC offset from leaking from gain stages but that's just like a really typical sequence of electrical components I know from looking at a lot of schematics so <laughs> Here's our signal coming in on the level pop. If it then goes to this pan pop, if I turn it fully right, then it's appearing on this pin. You see when I turn it fully left, it disappears out of that pin. So that's it going all the way to the right now. And then what I can do without turning the board over is I can try and find the capacitors that it's passing through. So I know from experience it's typically these smallish 10 microfaradish electrolytic capacitors. I mean that's probably these two op amps here that are for the fader left and right buffers. Um, so if I touch the top of them eventually I'm going to find the one that the AC is passing through. Now, you see how that's loud even though the faders down. So that's a pre-fader capacitor, one of the two either side of the op amp before the fader. Um, and there's this one, but that one attenuates when I turn down the fader. So I know that's a post op amp one. Uh, I'll just turn this up a little bit more. Probably there's some resistors in line with these outputs to change the output impedance of this. So I'm probably getting a hotter signal into my monitors than I would do just plugging into RCA socket. So I need to be a little bit careful with the level. I've turned it up a bit. It seems to be quite a quiet section of tape. Where was I? But I mean, that's... 
less apparent in this section of tape, but earlier on during quite a loud passage of this cassette, it was obvious that the signal after the fader was more distorted than the signal going into the fader. That, in combination with the fact that I'm getting this kind of popping sound when I pull out of the right-hand speaker when I pull this down, is a strong indicator to me that there's something up with the op-amp post-fader in the right-hand channel. Typically, I mean, I'll check this on the schematic, these op-amp chips are 8 pins, so two of them are for power, so they've got 6 pins, so that's for two op-amps, negative and positive input and output for op-amp A and B. Usually A and B on the same chip are going to be your post-fader op-amp and then there'll be a separate chip for your pre-fader op-amp. So I can't leave the left-hand one which is working fine in situ without changing the right one. I'm suspecting it's these two but I'll check on the schematic. I mean I could check without the schematic by um, a similar process but with the board tipped up touching places to figure out which op-amp signal gets turned down when I turn down the fader. Here's the schematic of the mixer input PCB for the port 03. I've got it in Photoshop. I've added some semi-transparent highlighting in layers just to make this a little bit clearer what I'm talking about. But this is uh, what I was expecting to see. It's not clear whether this is the left channel and this is the right channel or vice versa. But let's say for argument that this is the left channel. I could establish that by following this off and seeing whether it goes to the left or right, headphone in line and output. But saying this is the left output, you can see there's a series of joints here, it goes off the screen, but all four of your left output from your four pan pots are converging at this point here. And uh, what we've got is uh, op amp bookended by electrolytic capacitors. And it's passing through one side of the master fader. Master fader is really two variable resistors in one casing. And then it's coming up to another buffer, which again is bookended by these electrolytic capacitors, which I've highlighted in green. And you can see from the part numbers, U5051 of 2, U5052 of 2, that the pre-fader buffer, it's two op amps and one 8-pin chip. The post fader op amp buffer that's two op amps and one eight pin chip so what i found from experience and i'm not going to go into a huge amount of electrical detail like you know complicated mathematics or spice simulations or anything but what i've found is that if any of these four capacitors are leaky and off value it'll create quietness or distortion in the stereo section of the circuit you can also see with this um, i haven't highlighted them but there's electrical capacitors here that are in the gain loop for these two op amps. So what I'll do is those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten capacitors, you know, they're probably worth like 20, 30 pence each. So I'll just change all of those and see where we are. If that doesn't solve it, I'll probably replace both op amp chips, even though I suspect it's happening after the fader based on the results I was getting with the audio probe. I mean, you can see there's little ceramic capacitors here, resistors. I'm not going to change those things. Those things, unless they're visibly charred, like they've got some heat into them, they don't tend to fail, whereas electrolytic capacitors, because it's liquid in a pressurised container and those pressurised containers can be faulty, they're much more likely to fail than other types of components. So off the schematic you can see that I've made a list of all the capacitors and chips that are associated with that section of the circuit. For the Master Pre, I've got these part numbers, C112, 212, blah blah blah. Um, over to the side it's 10 slash 16, that's my shorthand for 10 microfarads. These are all going to be in the microfarad range and a 16 volt. And they're all that value except these two that were part of the feedback loop. They go to ground, so I mean if I was going to guess, I feel like these are the most likely colours like maybe somebody put the wrong polarity of power supply into this and so has overheated these one of them anyway because it's only affecting one channel but I'm going to replace all of them anyway I won't replace these two op-amp chips unless the partial recap doesn't work I've got to hold my sharpie pen and I've just marked these part numbers as they appear so I've got some sort of visual guide I've got a kit of uh, different capacitor values. I'm using Nichicon UFW, slightly more upmarket. You can get like quite a cheap box like this with all the values in it. It's a multi-pack off eBay, Amazon, whatever. I tend to replace all of them at the same value at the same time. So I'd probably do all eight of them that are 10 microfarad and 16 volt in one go and then do the other value in a separate pass so that I'm not likely to put the wrong value in the wrong place. Then on the rear side, marked up 
pins of the capacitors I'm going to remove again with Sharpie. We'll be introducing a little bit of fresh solder to each of those joints and then soaking up the melted solder with desoldering braid. And then before pulling on the capacitors from the other side I'll just make sure by poking with a hot solder that the legs aren't stuck to the pads in any way because if you pull them while the pads are still stuck even by a little bit of solder then that can lift the tracks off the printed circuit board. When you remove capacitors, you can see the symbol below. Electrolytic capacitors are polarized. That means they have a positive and a negative side. And uh, if you put the positive side of the capacitor into the negative side of the hole, then the circuit's gonna not work at all or work badly. So electrolytic capacitors will have a stripe on one side. You see there's this black stripe. So that's negative side and that goes into the part of the socket with the round bit. So that's correct, you see the black stripe is lining up with the round bit. These are the 10 capacitors that I've removed and uh, that seems to have done the trick. <laughs> crackling thing out of the right speaker that I was and it's uh, equally clear and loud on both sides when I use the pan control.